रो रो के ए मेरे बाबा सकीन कहती थी रो रो के ए मेरे बाबा हो तुम जहा पे वहा हो तुम जहा पे वहा को ले चलो बाबा सकीन कहती थी रो रो के मेरे बाबा कैसे आई हूँ मैं बाजार से होकर बाबा मुझको मारे गए जख्मों पे पत्थर बाबा रो के चिल्लाती रही फिर भी रो के चिल्लाती रही फिर भी किसी ने ना सुना सकी न कहती थी रो रो के मेरे बाबा सात सूरज के भी दिन डू रहा होता है अम्मा कहती है यही वक्त दुआ होता है रोज करती हूँ सर शाम रोज करती हूँ सर शाम मैं मरने सकी न कहती थी रो रो के मेरे बाबा जाके जन्नत में भी आराम नहीं पाएगा क्या ये अरमान मेरे दिल में ही रह जाएगा कैसे गोदी मैं उठाऊंगी कैसे गोदी मैं उठाऊंगी मैं असल को भला सकी न कहती थी रो रो के मेरे बाबा आखिरी शेर पेश खदमत गिर पड़ी खाक नामू से नबी पीठ के सर कैद खाने मैं हुई यार प्याम तक लेके सर बाप का बेटी ने लेके सर बाप का बेटी ने जो रो रो के कहा सकी न कहती थी रो रो के मेरे बाबा हो तुम जहा पे वहा हूँ तो हो तुम जहा पे वहा हूँ तो ले चलो बाबा सकी न कहती थी रो रो के मेरे बाबा सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम
اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد بسم الله مولانا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد رحم الله من قرع الفاتحة بسم الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي لا يبلغ مدهته القائلون ولا يحسين عاماه العادون ولا يعدي حقه المجتهدون الذي لا يدركه بود الحمم ولا يناله غوث الفتن الذي ليس لصفته حد محدود ولا نات موجود ولا جل ممدود ولا وقت معدود فترى الخلائق بقدرته ونشر الرياح برحمته وابتدا بالصخور ميدان ارضه ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا بالقاسم مصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين ولعنة الله على عاداه مجمعين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في قرآن الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كل نفس زائقة الموت وإنما توفون أجوركم يوم القيامة فمن زحزح عن النار وأدخل الجنة فقد فاز وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور صدق الله العلي العظيم Please recite this majlis is the Salih Sawab of Marhum Inayat Dhala and Marhumins of Brother Zia and Sister Sakina Khawaja's family so please recite Surah Al-Mubarakat Al-Fatiha and Surah Al-Ikhlas three times for all these Marhumin بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين الحمد لله إذن السراوط المستقيم سراوط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والله الله وحده لا شريك له May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive these marhumin and raise their rank in the Jannah. Recite salawat please. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying in the Quran that kullu nafsin zaiqatul maut. The very famous ayah which we have heard many and many times I think if I ask our children they have also memorized up to this but the the next part of the ayah is saying kullu nafsin zaiqatul maut wa innama tuwaffawna ujurakum yawm al-qiyamati faman zuhziha anil nar wa udkhil jannata faqad fada wa ma al-hayat al-dunya illa mata'ul ghurur Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that every soul shall taste of death and you shall only be paid fully your reward on the day of resurrection, on the day of Qiyamah, and then whosoever is removed far away from the fire and is made to enter the garden indeed, he indeed has to attain the object and he and the life of this world is nothing but a provision and when it is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us all of us in this world Allah has created and sent us in this world no doubt no doubt because we see our existence in this world so that is why no doubt 
we are here because we are not amongst those we they have doubt you know if you go in the islamic philosophy you will find so many groups some of them they were follower of the intellect or you know a logic and some of them they were shakak you know they were uh, amongst the group of uh, who has doubt in everything so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us no doubt and once he has created allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has prepared this place for us as a place of test this place allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us as a place of test as a place of exam so we cannot go away from the test and the exam of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as long as we are alive in this world so this our word has nothing but the, if you go another step according to the ayah is saying so that this uh, this place is the place of exam and also this word has nothing but a provision of vanities means allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying oh human being be careful when you are in this world so don't consider don't rely that much in this world or anything because these things which you are going to use in their life they are just like a provision of vanities sometimes they can betray you not things even even your own people your own relatives your own children your own wife so be careful this is the message why because we are in the state of exam each and every step and that is why if you can if you see if we see our life each and every step of our life is a test how even i give you a very simple example where our children can understand we taste everything in this world to be tested to test even if you want to eat your food first you taste you taste because you want to you taste those things you want to test or you can say you test that food so you taste both are the same you test so you taste or sometimes you can say you are being tested and for that you have to taste and that is why quran is saying kullu nafsin zaiqatul mouth even mouth even death will taste all souls every soul has to taste that the taste of death so why because why quran is saying that there is a very nice point that why quran has said that kullu nafsin zaiqatul mouth every soul has will test the death because each and every soul why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used the word taste because we people we have different nature our nature is different our requirement is different our being is different and that is why when we have different individual you know existence we have different nature in this world so our death will be also different means whatever death i will taste maybe other people will not taste that the same death it depends it depends on the rank and the lifestyle we i have finished in this life according to that life we will be uh, you know we will be uh, tested and we will taste the death but now my concern and my today in this majlis i want to give a message through this thing that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us and he has sent us in this world and this world is a place of taste is a place of exam so when this world is place of exam then what should we do for this exam and how our exam will be and why we have to give this exam what is the reason so 
if you see that kullu nafsin zaiqatul maut wala nabluwakum bisharri wal khair fitnatan wa ilayna turjaun another place quran is saying kullu nafsin zaiqatul maut this ayah is also in different uh, surah in surah anbiya a number 35 where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying kullu nafsin zaiqatul maut wa nabluwakum bisharri wal khair fitnatan wa ilayna turjaun every soul will taste you know the death and we have to and then when we taste the you know death we have been you know in the state of exam so when every soul taste the death and we try by evil and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that oh human being you will be you will be try means allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will examine us by two things one is evil and another is good so you will be try allah says that, that we try you by evil and by good by way of probation you know for, by way of probation and to us you shall you know brought back wa ilaina turjaun so when we will be tested by good and bad by the way of probation you know this probation word you people know very well that whenever you uh, you know you accept anybody as your employee so you put for 3 months or 6 months you say that you are on probation so in that period i'm test what does it mean by probation that i'm going to test you i'm going to test you if your work is good if you are on time you are not coming we delay you are punctual you are coming you you have interest in your job you have a skill to do this work all these qualities if you have then we will say okay now i can continue our agreement with you and you can as long as we have planned so probation means allah subhanahu wa taala has saying also has said this in this ayah that kullu nafsin zaiqatul maut wa nabluwakum and he will test oh people you will be tested he uh, we will be test you know allah subhanahu wa taala will test wala nabluwakum bisharr wa bil wal wal khair he will test us with good and bad for what fitnatan wa ilayna turjaun for probation so this life how, doesn't matter how long we are going to live in this world 10 years 20 years 50 years 60 70 80 100 years any time period if we have been given in this world we should not forget that allah subhanahu wa taala has given this time for to us to test us so we are 24/7 you can say right tv you know tv channel they right 20 24/7 we are continuously in the state of exam so when we are continuously in the state of exam then what type of exam we have to give i said that we will we have to face evil and good also it means we can face bad things in our life bad things in the sense uh, which is you know uncomfortable for us which is not easy for us which is hard for us you can say hardship you can say trouble you can say problems and also we can have luxurious life we can have, we can have comfort comfort zone we we can have plenty of blessings of allah we can have so many things around us and those things are test those things allah will you know give us as test and another ayah of surah baqara ayah number 155 is saying that wala nabluwannakum bi shay'in min al khawf wal ju' wa naqs min al amwal wal anfus wal anfus and then ayah is saying wa thamarat wa bashir as-sabirin and then you have heard after that ayah too many times 
والذين إذا أصابتهم قالوا والذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إن لله وإن إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون so this ayah is also saying oh people I'm going to test you ولا نبلونكم you know I'm not, I'm not going to focus too much on grammar point, but make sure whenever we use uh, this lam before uh, here in, in a, you know, before any uh, verb, then it means it, this sentence is emphasis, emphasis, emphasizing and forcing and point, you know, attracting our attraction too much. Most surely, for sure, no doubt, wala nabluannakum. Most surely, Allah will test you. Means Allah is saying, most surely I will test you. With what? With With shay. With now shay. Whenever we use shay, means things. Like in, in English, we say things. So things has so many things. Everything you can say. This has a no boundary. This has no limitation. It, it you can say it is like infinity so when Allah is saying wala nablua, wala i will test you with everything bishayin min al khawf now few of them allah is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying few of them are that min al khawf what is khawf fear and no you know fear is a very very big thing fear can be uh, you know, everywhere we can find fear. Fear of economy, fear of health, fear of wealth, fear of children, fear of, you know, uh, losing our relatives, fear of friends, good or bad, fear of uh, having disaster, fear of uh, calamities, so many fear you can imagine. So Allah will test us with all these things. Min al wal with hunger. وَنَقْسِمْ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ And, you know, with the, uh, with the loss of our property. وَالْأَنْفُسْ And with our own people, Allah can test. وَالْثَمَرَاتِ And fruits. Fruits means not this only fruits. What is, is the result? Let's say I have started business. And within few days, within few months, I gained lots. Now, if I do not control myself, because my next part is the, I'm going to, why I'm telling all these things? To tell you what type of individual we are. Which type of existence we, existence we have. Which type of human being or creation of God we are. So when we have gained so many things as a fruit, as a result, we should be very conscious. We should be very, very careful. And then you give glad tiding to those people. They have sabr, patience at the time of exam. Why? Because Allah is saying, Because those people, whenever they, they have any musibah, any problem, disaster, they say, قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ this is the highest position of a human being can ever imagine. If this condition we have in our life, make sure. Now, then you just you turn on your AC and then sleep. You are in very, very comfort zone. If we reach to this state, if we reach to this state, whenever we have any problem in our life, we say, everything is from Allah. Then Allah is saying, Oh Prophet, you give glad tidings for them. Because those are, those are the salawat. For them, there is a salutation. From their Lord, Rahma and mercy. And these are the people, they are the guided one. They are the great people. So, my elders, my brothers and sisters, we have creation of God and we are in the state of exam. We should not even forget for a single minute in our life. 
Now for this this exam, this uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this body has given this body two things. That is two, two we are different, you can say, but I'm going to just, uh, you know, uh, to give a, uh, get a result. And that's why I'm giving you, uh, telling you just two things. Like we have, uh, you know, soul and we have nafs, you can say. Because there is a question. If we came in this world, for example, or to be examined, this is a question you can ask. Then when I have come, you know, I came here in this world for exam and to be examined, then what things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so we can pass our test. You know, even in this world, if we have exam, it means before exam, I have prepared myself. And for that preparation, I have studied. I have studied so many books, materials, articles, journals, so many things we have prepared. And now I'm going to give exam. If I say you have tomorrow exam, frequently you will ask, what exam? Why I have to give exam? Where, where are you going to ask? What is the source? What is the material you are going to test us? So it means when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, oh people, you are in the state of exam, I'm going to test you in this world. Then of course there is an obvious question that uh, what, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us on, the, on that basis, he is going to test us. So the answer is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us ruh. فَنَفَقْتُ مِنْ رُوحِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he is saying, O oh, angels, when I blow my room, my spirit in Adam, then you go, you know, in, in, uh, you bow down uh, in front of Adam. So one thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a soul, but this soul is a divine power. This, whenever we use the word soul or roof, that means a divine power. And that is a pure thing. And another thing parallel to that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, that is nafs. And that nafs, sometimes in English we say also soul, nafs. But in Arabic, it has different meaning, all soul, ruh, and uh, you know, amr, all they have different meaning and different use and different categories. Amr, amr, ulil amr, tanazzalul malaikatu wa ruh, fiha bi'idni rabbihim min kulli amr. This, Amr is different thing, and suru is different thing, and nafs is different thing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the test, he has given us what? Soul and nafs. This is a very, very important topic, and it requires very, very, you know, uh, you know, long time, but I'm going to finish. Don't worry, I'm not going to take your one hour or 45 minutes, even, uh, you know, within a time, inshallah, I will finish my words, but I'm, I'm just, simplifying you know uh, uh, i'm telling you very simply a simple way that what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us and how we we use these things as a tools as a material to pass our test and then we get perfection and we leave this world with tension without tension and and we uh, reach to our perfection, to our goal. So I was saying, uh, I was telling that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us ru and another thing is nafs. And they are just like a, you know, scale balance. Both things we have to balance because ru has a divine and pure things and nafs has a desire, desire, our needs, our wishes, including included in that. And another top of that, you know, there is a iblis. So we have two things. Uh, one is we have inner thing which misguide us. And when there is an outer thing like Iblis who, guide, who misguide us. So this is just like, a, you know, uh, uh, these two things uh, works together. But if we, if we dominate our soul or our nafs, it means we have controlled our human nature. But if our nafs got dominance or our ruh, it means now I have a wild nature. I have an animal nature. 
because nafs is an animal nature and ruh is a divine nature. So we human being, we are different from animals and we are different from angels. Why? Because we have both souls. Animals, they have only and only nafs, means you, they have only desire. And angels, they have only and only intellect. That means soul. That means divine nature. But we human being, we have both. When we have both, so there is a always fight. When there is a fight, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, in, in Surah Yusuf, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in Surah Yusuf, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُوا نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوهُ إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ رَبِّي إِنَّ رَبِّي غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, and I do not declare my, you know, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, the words of Prophet Yusuf -Islam, when he was trapped by Shaitan and Zulaikha, then what he says, and I do not declare myself free, O oh Allah, do not let me alone. Rabbi la tadarni fardan wa anta khairul waritin. Oh my Lord, we recite this dua in, my, in our kulut. Rabbi la tadarni fardan wa anta khairul waritin. Oh my Lord, don't leave me alone. You are the best warith and you know, uh, guard, guardian. So here Prophet Yusuf is saying, I do not declare myself free. Why? Because if I feel free, you know, this is very, very common philosophy around, uh, today, in today's 21st century is working that we human being are free. What does it mean, it mean by we human being are free? Means whatsoever I wish I can do. No, if we declare that we are free, then no, you know what would happen if we will become free? Most surely, this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah saying, man self is won't command himself to do evil, except such as my Lord has mercy. And so it is, I'm not saying, Prophet Yusuf is saying that, now you can imagine he was prophet mazum but he's saying if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help was not there allah's help was not there me i yusuf was supposed to come you know trapped by shaitan why well there is an, another diff, uh, you know uh, discussion here that mazum and uh, aima and prophets uh, they never ever be trapped it is impossible this is not our faith shaitan cannot cannot never ever cannot misguide them this is our firm belief and i tell i told you many times this is our firm faith otherwise whole religion will collapse that if you if anyone imagine that any masum and prophet they can know they can do any guna or sin so it, this is impossible but it is very very clear you can go refer that shaitan if shaitan can can come to us he was not going to them yes of course he was going but he was regime he was thrown away why because they were very very strong people how they were strong because when they never declared that we are free we are alone human being no only all always our prophets and aima they were having a connection a close connection with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never they were thought that our connection has cut with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we human being of course when aima they have connected full time them with Allah, of course, we have to have, have a, a strong bond and connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, no one can, no one can help us. No one can stop us. And that is, let me, that is why, let me tell you one thing very important to our youth. No one can challenge in this world that he cannot do any guna except masumin. So doing guna is not a big deal. I'm going to repeat. Don't get negative meaning of my this sentence. Doing guna, falling in guna is not a big deal. No, anyone can do guna. The big deal is that we put ourselves in the environment of guna. And that is why if you go and ask Maraja and Walama, they say we should try not to put ourselves, involve ourselves in the environment of guna. Otherwise, as long as you and we enter in the environment of guna, then no one can stop us. And you, you can, uh, my youth, you can pay attention. It is just like an example of, you know, electron and, and nucleus. 
so when electron having having this rotation rotation around the nucleus because of this rotation fast rotation there is a force you know apply that we call uh, you know centrifugal force and because of this centrifugal force this electron is rotating rotating with uh, with a uh, uh, with a power which cannot allow electron to go inside the nucleus otherwise if electron goes into the nucleus the blast will happen and same way when uh, around our nafs amara around our nafs amara you imagine nafs nafs amara is just like a, a nucleus and shaitan is like electron is rotating rotating as soon as this centrifugal force becomes you know poor becomes uh, low then the shaitan attack so shaitan uh, that is why on the day of judgment when we will complain in near allah that oh allah shaitan misguided us shaitan will come and he will say oh how you can say i have misguided you you had soul you had intellect so why didn't you examine why didn't you you know compare so we should compare now the second step that we have to compare ourselves which type of soul we have nafs amara because there are so many soul one is amara and then lawama and then mula you know uh, there is another soul which which gives us the message that we you know mulhima ilham which ilham and another step and the last stage that is mutmainna so my dear youths brothers and sister in this world we are today majlis is the isale sawab of marhum we are sending isale sawab of a father isale sawab of a cousin brother may allah subhanahu wa taala forgive these marhumin why we are doing this isale sawab because their time has finished now whatever deeds actions they were supposed to do they has they had done in this world now their hands are closed we as their relatives as they are here we have this offer and this you know opportunity that we can do some good deeds to send them allah subhanahu wa taala has allowed us this for to do so so that is why so as long as we are not checking our own self then how we can give send you know uh, blessings to others so we should know this soul as long as we are in this world because once we close our this eyes al ayna wa yausa mawlai kainat amir al mu'minin alayhi salam has said al ayna wa yausa as long as these eyes are open everything our all conscience and all our brain and everything is working but if these eyes will close everything will shut down now we cannot do then we have to wish ay kaash we will get another chance and come back to this world and do and quran you know says that this is your nature i know human being if i leave you go to alone in this world you will do the same thing because you are insan nas you forget everything you because uh, you you sometimes you trapped by shaitan so why we should not how we should not be trapped by shaitan what should we do we have to know which type of soul we have in the in our which type of soul we are developing in our body day by day of course we have nafs amara amara to bis amara tum bisu bad which which uh, you know uh, deal with our desire which invites us which you know push us towards bad thing this this soul we have and there is another soul we have lamama this that soul is this says no 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 this is not good this is bad and that is why whenever a person commits first time sin then his own zamir his own instinct says that you have done wrong if he listen this inner voice then he will not repeat that mistake again but because human being they kill that voice and that is why they commit sin again and again so our our you know body which we have is building a day by day according to our soul so if our amara soul our nafs amara is dominant our or lamama lawama our resurrection will be the same way as you heard many times that in akhirat people will have their you know their body according some people they will have dog's body some people they will have pig 
a body some people they will be like donkey some people they will be like you know lion or some like animals why because um, nafse amara is an animal nature and if we develop this animal nature as long as we are living in this world and we have not uh, put uh, down this animal nature and we have not uh, dominant our spirituality then we will be resurrected with the same shackle with the same face on the day of judgment this is very very simple formula like that thing there is no doubt and then and that is why you have heard many times i'm uh, you know once uh, I, I don't want to go deep once a person said how yeah ibn uh, rasulullah how many hajjaj how many hajis are this year imam said okay you want to see are they haji really imam said look now look in between my two fingers and imam showed them that some most of them they were like animals so imam showed their nafsi amara shakl face of amara so we all have so we all have what is the solution how do we kill this by knowing that so how we test i give you one example how we how do we test that really in in my life whatever age i have i am 35 i am 40 i am 60 i am 20 i am 15 what enough has been developed too much in my life you go and check practically the rituals the the amal the adab the commands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i give you one example for example subh morning namaz morning namaz if due to any reason i a person has uh, you know skip his namaz her namaz becomes qaza now if he has no tension Okay, namaz has been kaza, no problem. He has washed his face and then nice, mashallah, he sat on the dining table and having a heavy breakfast and, you know, having kravat and going to office, no tension like that. It means he has a nafsi ammara. But at the same time, there are so many people, they say, ay, why? Khad bar saram. I kill myself. Today, I lost my namaz. Okay, he both they lost, but now he he regret. He feel guilty. Why I lost my namaz? Why did I did not uh, cook my uh, you know watch to to put alarm and to you know realize that what time is namaz? So this person is lavama. Why? Why? Because now this soul is you know um, regretting that you have done wrong. You have left your namaz kaza like that. So it means we have lamama. But there are another state. If we pray namaz on time and after praying namaz, we feel good. Not even now. Some people, they pray namaz, but even they feel, hey, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept this two rakat namaz? On this morning, I was sleeping in the temperature of 20 and 22 degree AC. Like, for example, now uh, weather is hot. So, so many people, they have put on their AC. And when there, there was a winter season, season, it was hard to leave your blanket and your hot bed soft. And then you go just wash yourself and pray to Rakat Namaz, just two minutes. What is this? So if we have this intention, it means still I have the same soul. But if a person same time has no, thank God, you have given this life, these blessings, and now you gave us opportunity to pray this namaz, it means he has nafse mutmainna. He is itmanan. He has itmanan. So you see how we can check which type of soul we have. So if we, we are in this stage, we can say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, then what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you have nafse ammara, yaja'allakum furqan. Then Allah will give you ability to know what is good and what is bad. What is haq and what is batil. And that is why people, they were around Amir al mumin alayhi salam. People, they were around Imam Hussein alayhi salam. People, they were around Imam Hassan alayhi salam. All imma. But same time, they were confused. Why they were confused? Because they were having the soul of Amara, Nafsi Amara, they were having. They were not even having Nafsi Lawama. And that is why they were asking Amir al Mumnil al Salam, Are you on Haq or Madiya? Is this a question? Imam said, You are looking, you are, uh, you are finding Haq in personalities. Look, where is Amir al Mumnil? That is why <laughs> Holy Prophet <laughs> has said many, many years before, Al Haqq ma al Ali wal Aliyum wal Aliyum ma al Haqq. So, those people, they, they had confusion either at the time of Mawlai Kainat, Amir al-Mamnin al-Islam, who is on the haq, 
Mavia or Amir al Mumdin or other Khulafa or who uh, at the time of Imam Hussein al Islam, Nozubil Astaghfirullah, Yazid, or, and these people who, who is uh, right and wrong means they were having animal soul and that is why imam hussein Islam, on the day of ashura said that i know why my words are not going in your brain your in your mind because your bellies are full of haram najis ghada najis food you have because you have developed which soul soul of amara so now it is very clear that why prophets and aima sometimes our youth this is the last thing I tell you, and then I recite in Masai that sometimes our youths they ask question: Why Aima they were not going doing mistake? No, Why uh, they were not doing guna? Why prophets? Because when we people when we reach step by step, because this is not one or two day story. No, it requires practice. Riyadh, it requires practice, meditation. And, and a struggle, an exam, which I told you, you have to give exam test. Then, then we will reach from Nafsi Amara to Lawama and Lawama to uh, Mulhima and from Mulhima to um, Nafsi Mutmainna. And when we reach to Nafsi Mutmainna, then this is the last thing. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call us. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutmainna. Irjay ila rabbi kiradiyatam mardiya. Fadkhuli fi ibadi. Fadkhuli jannati. And most of the Shia commentators they have said this ayah, Imam Hussein is the only misdaq you can say of this ayah. Why? Because this Zahra ka lal, when the Nargay Adam तुमने हमारे कासिम को शहीद कर दिया तुमने हमारे औनो मुहम्मद को शहीद कर दिया तुमने कासिम के लाश को तुमने कासिम के बदन को उसकी जिंदगी में ही पामाल कर दिया तुमने मेरे अकबर को मेरे जवान कड़ियल बेटे को हमसे छीन लिया मेरे कड़ियल जवान भाई अब्बास को छीन लिया आओ तुम मुझे मजबूर समझते हो <coughs> तुम मुझे लाचार समझते हो आओ तो मैं तुम्हें अपनी जंग दिखाता हूं अपनी शुजात दिखाता हूं और एक मर्तबा मक्तल में मिलता है कि जिस वक्त इमाम हुसैन अलैहिस्सलाम ने हमला किया है तो हमले उला में कई सौ कई सौ कातिलाने दुश्मनाने अहले बैत को वासिल जहन्नम किया हां अजीजो इमाम का हमला होता है यहां तक के इतना सख्त हमला होता है इतना भारी हमला होता है एक कि कूफा की फौज कूफा की दीवारों से टकरा रही थी हां अजीजो इमाम लड़ रहे हैं और जो दुश्मनों को वासिल जहन्नम कहर कर रहे हैं लेकिन इसी असना में यह आवाज यह निदाए गैबी आती है बस या हुसैन बस लाशों पे लाश 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 کہ بس یا حسین بس یا ایتہ النفس المطمئنہ ارجئی لا ربك راضیت مرضیا اے نفس مطمئنہ اے پلٹ آپ نے رب کی طرف او تو اس سے راضی تو اس سے راضی ہاں عزیزو بس یہ ندائے غیبی سننا تھی کہ مولا نے اپنی تلوار کو نیام میں رکھا بھاگی ہوئی فوج سمتی اب جس کے پاس کچھ نہیں ہے تو وہ جھولیوں میں پتھر لے کے آئے ہیں کوئی پتھر مارتا ہے کوئی तीर मारता है कोई तबर मारता है कोई तलवार मारता है कोई नेजे से हमला कर रहा है एक मर्तबा जब जहरा के लाल से फरस पे ठहरा ना जा सका तो घोड़े की गर्दन में अपनी बाहें डाल दी ए जुलजना मुझे बस उस गोदिए को कत्लगाह तक पहुंचा दे जहां मेरी मां इंतजार कर रही है बस ये तेरी आखिरी मंजिल है हां अजीजो इमाम कत्लगाह में आ ते हैं एक मर्तबा एक घोड़े से जमीन पे तशरीफ लाते हैं इधर से फौजे नजदीक आती है और पिसरे साथ हुक्म देता है शिमर शिमर मलून कुंद खंजर लेके आगे बढ़ता है ये मंजर बहन खेमेगा से देख रही थी जैनब से संभाला जा सका एक मर्तबा जैनब उलिया मकाम खेमे से बाहर आ गई तिल्ले जैनबिया पे अब क्या देखा कि शिमर मलून इमाम हुसैन के सदर मुबारक पे बैठा 
ہوا ہے ایک مرتبہ آواز دی اے پسر سعد تو دیکھ رہا ہے میرا ماجایا زب ہو رہا ہے ابھی امام حسین کے جس میں حیات کی رمک باقی تھی ایک مرتبہ اشارہ کیا اے بہن خیمے میں پلٹ جاؤ تمہارا بھائی ابھی زندہ ہے میں کہوں گا اے میرے آقا آپ کو اپنی بہن زینب کے پردے کا اتنا خیال ہے اثر آشور آئیے یہی زینب ام کلسوم ہے جن کے سرحوں پہ چادر نہیں ہے اور اشقیاء ان کا حلقہ بنائے ہوئے ہیں ہاں عزیزوں ایک مرتوہ شبر نے خنجر چلایا ایک پیچاری ماں ایک دخیاری ماں انہیں کہا اے شبر میرے لال نے تیرا کیا بگاڑا ہے کہ تجھے کہ تو اسے تین دن کا بھوکا و پیاسا زبا کر رہا ہے علا علانت اللہ علا القوم الظالمین و سیالم الذین ظلموا ایا منقلبی انقلبون پروردگار تجھے واسطہ محمد و علی محمد کا اس ذکر کا جو بھی ثواب تُو نے معین کیا ہے مرہومین جن کے اس حال ثواب کی مجلس تھی ان کی ارواح مقدسہ کو حدیعہ فرما دے پروردگار تمام مومنین مومنات کی مغفرت فرما ہمارے گناہانے کبیرہ و صغیرہ کو معاف کر دے تمام مومنین مومنات سے ایک مرتوہ درخواست ہے ای ریکویسٹ ونس اگین اول مومنین این مومنات پلیز ریسائٹ سور فاتحہ فور مرہوم انعیت حالہ این مرہومینز آف بردر زیا این سسٹر سکینہ خواجہ فیملی رضا بھائی پلیز ریسائٹ زیر السلام علیکم السلام علیکم السلام علیکم محمد الحبیب السلام علیکم امیر السلام علیکم محمد المصطفی السلام علیکم علی المرتضا السلام علیکم ابن فاطم متزہرا السلام علیکم ابن خدیجہ الکبرا السلام علیکم یتر اللہ و ابن تاریح و البتر الموتو اشہد انکہ قد قمت الصلاة و عطیت الزکاة و مرد المعروف و نحیت عنمت